Lebo, age 65, is a publisher and shareholder of the Causeway Bay Bookstore in Hong Kong. He has been publishing political books about China and Chinese leaders for more than a decade. On the 31st of December 2015, his wife suddenly lost contact with him. The incident has raised widespread concern among Hong Kong's pro-democracy camp and drawn international attention. They ask why a man of justice, who chooses to fight to publish books that expose the dark side of the Chinese authorities, should face such dire consequence of political persecution. Following these urgent appeals, how have Hong Kong people reacted? Compared with 2003, when half a million people took to the streets to protest against the legislation of Article 23, just 6,000 people joined the march to help Lee on the 10th of January 2016. Why the lukewarm response? Why do people seem so indifferent? Perhaps nothing can better explain the situation than Lee's own testimonial, his very words about his business and his work, as reported by media tycoon Jimmy Lai's Next magazine in its 6th of January 2016 issue. Publishing political books is not about justice. It's about hefty profits, Lee said in the next magazine cover story, Making a Fortune by Publishing Banned Books. Books about the Chinese government and Chinese leaders, such as assassinating Xi Jinping, though they sound like the tales of Sinbad, have attracted many people to buy. Political books related to Chinese leaders have attracted a lot of mainland tourists to purchase. The more sensitive the story themes, the more popular. Lee has eyed the big market created by mainland tourists in Hong Kong, who were eager to buy these kind of political books, or banned books as they are called in China. According to Next Magazine's own calculation, the Causeway Bay bookstore made a profit of at least 5 million Hong Kong dollars in 2015 alone. But profits aside, the shocking truth is also Lee's admission of the less than authentic content of these books. The content of the books is half fact and half fiction. For many of the things we have said about the mainland government, you cannot possibly believe that they are true. There is very little genuine insider information in the books. I don't have many connections to get insider information. The majority of the stuff was copied from the internet and other published materials. The content was developed from amalgamating information from many sources, he told the magazine. Lee's frank admission is astonishing, but his honesty does give people a better perspective of his business. If you ask how imaginative the books sold at Lee's store and many newspaper stands in the streets of Hong Kong are, you could look to one of the most popular titles. House arrest Jiang Zeming says that because the conflict between Jiang and President Xi escalated, Jiang was placed under house arrest in May 2015. If that is true, how does it explain the fact that Jiang, looking lively and well, joined all the party elders at the Tiananmen Rostrum last September to review one of the country's largest ever military parades? Will Hong Kong people take this kind of book as exposing the hard truth of the mainland government and its leadership? Hong Kong people are smart enough to draw their own conclusions. The sad truth about the Lee Bo saga is that he gets into trouble not because of freedom of speech. His is a business that relies on copying others' information, some fact, most fiction, and packaging it into books with gossipy content. It's no more, no less. One could ask, in any modern society, wouldn't anyone publishing books based on libelous content or plagiarism be liable for an offence? Once it gets down to the sad truth of Lee's business, one can probably understand why he cannot win the support of most Hong Kong people. Abusing freedom of expression to make a fortune has nothing to do with justice. Instead, it devastates people's faith in free speech. <laughs>